Hey everyone, today I'm going to be building computer scientist Margaret Hamilton, the final set in the Lego Women of NASA kit. I've already made the platform that Margaret and the other Lego pieces are going to be standing on, so let's get things started with actually making Margaret as a Lego figurine. So I'm just finding her face and her body, and we've got two options. Uh, she can look a little serious or she can look nice and smiley, so let's give her her super smiley face and then we're going to uh, pop her skirt on. She has long um, brown hair. So there we go, that's Margaret. And actually the whole scene that we're creating here is based on a real picture that was taken of Margaret in 1969. And she stood next to this huge stack of books and those books contained all of the computer programming, all of the code that she helped to write and design that eventually went into the spacecraft that successfully landed on the moon. More on that later. First, let's learn a little bit more about Margaret. Born in 1936, Margaret Hamilton always loved maths and numbers, which is why she wanted to become a computer scientist. And she learned how to program computers while she was studying at MIT. So when NASA decided to join with MIT to help them design a new type of computer software, which would go into the spaceship they wanted to land on the moon, Margaret Hamilton was one of the most experienced people out there and became the right person to lead the team. All right, let's put Margaret to the side. Now, the picture that we're recreating is one of her stood in her laboratory. Um, so we're going to be making the back wall that was just a white wall. So let's get started and follow the instructions. There we go. But this is looking a little bit empty. We need some working out on the board behind her. And actually this little tile here that Lego have printed um, is actually based off the drawing that was behind Margaret in the real picture. There we go. All right. So this is the finished back wall. If you've ever flown in an aeroplane, then you might know that for some of the flight, a computer program takes over. But now imagine designing that computer program in the 1960s, except you're not designing it for a plane that's taking people on their holidays, you're designing it for a spacecraft that has to land on the moon. All of this nearly 50 years ago. That was Margaret's job. On July 20th, 1969, as the Apollo 11 lunar lander approached the surface of the moon, its computer suddenly became overworked and alarms started to go off. Something was wrong. However, just when it seemed like the Apollo 11 landing was doomed, Margaret's computer software kicked into action. The computer software aboard the Apollo 11 that Margaret had designed was smart enough to know that it was being asked to do too many tasks at once because a wrong button had been pressed earlier. But instead of freaking out and just shutting down, it sounded an alarm which told NASA and the astronauts that everything was okay, it was just going to focus on the most important tasks. So it stopped doing the ones that weren't so important, and it just focused on the ones that were needed to land the spaceship. Without Margaret's software, the lunar landing might never have been possible. The last thing we want to do is create that enormous stack of books. And this should be pretty easy. I think we just need to pile up these blue and white tiles. Last one is going to just be a blue book on top. So I'm just going to move Margaret so she's uh, stood right next to the book as she is in that famous picture, like so. Last thing I think that we can see is um, almost like a coat hook that's in just in the corner so we can pop that on really easily. There. We're finished. That's it. This is our last Women of NASA. Um, setup that we've made. How cool is that? And we've only got a few random pieces left, so we'll just ignore those. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they were supposed to be. And I think the fact that um, the pile of Margaret's work is as tall as her goes to show just how much work um, she put into the NASA program. And actually, the work has been recognised recently by Barack Obama, who awarded Margaret Hamilton the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest award a a member of the public can receive. 
So there you go guys, this is the last set in our Women of NASA Ideas Kit. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and make sure you go back to watch the other two. One of them is about astronauts and the other is about an astronomer. Subscribe to this channel, stay curious and I'll see you soon.